Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Dan from DHTV and today I'm going to be showing you how to use the iPhone 15 and iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max cameras. Let's get started. All right, so we're going to be working with the iPhone 15 Pro, but it's pretty much the same for the standard iPhone 15. I'll let you know if there's any differences because this one does have two cameras where the Pro models have three. So let's start off by opening up the camera app here and it should take you to the photo section. If it doesn't, just swipe across. You can see all the different options like time-lapse, slow-mo, cinematic, video, photo, portrait, and pano. We'll be going through each and every one of those, but just navigate over to the photo section. Now there is a lot to cover in this video, so if you want to learn something specific, I put chapters to everything we're covering in this video in the video description, so you can click and skip ahead to exactly what you want to learn. But we're going to start off with this photo section here and taking a photo with the iPhone. So first, whenever you're taking a photo with the iPhone, you want to decide if you're holding it this way or this way, because you can shoot photos in both directions. Now when it comes to taking a photo, all you have to do is pretty much tap on this button here. This is called the shutter button. It takes your photo, a preview appears at the bottom left. When you open that preview, you have options. This one here is a share button. You can heart the photo. You can get information about the photo. You can edit the photo here and there's a whole bunch of editing options. I have a full tutorial on how to edit photos with the iPhone, so we won't get into that here, but you can watch that video after this one. And then finally, you can trash the photo if you don't like it. Let's just go back at the top left. And now let's talk about how we can make your photos look better. So by default, when you hit this button, it's using complete autofocus here, but it's always a good idea to tap on the subject you want to focus in on. So this is called tap to focus, and you can see slight blur appears on some of the subjects that are in this photo, depending on what I am focused in on. You can also play around with the exposure, so you can swipe upwards to raise and down to lower the exposure. Now when you do this, if you move the phone around too much, you're going to see the focus returns to that autofocus. So you can lock the focus and exposure just by tapping on the screen and holding your finger. You'll see the AEAF lock appear at the top. And now if you move the phone around, the focus is going to stay where you placed it. Anytime you want to remove that focus, just tap away and it'll go back to the autofocus. Additionally, you can zoom in and you see you have four zoom options here with the iPhone 15 Pro. Now the difference here with the iPhone 15 standard is that you only have three options, 0.5, one times, and two times. You can zoom in more than that, but then you're going to be using digital zoom where all of these are optical zooms. And you can just tap on it. So you have the two time zoom, three time zoom, back to the 24 millimeter one time zoom, and then the 0.5 times zoom where it zooms way out, giving you a nice wide angle shot. You can also tap and hold here and then use this wheel. Now, once you use this wheel, you can actually zoom in up to 15 times, which gets things really close. As soon as you pass your optical zoom, you're going to be using digital, which degrades the quality of your photos. You also can pinch to zoom, so you can pinch like this to zoom in. And when you're ready, all you have to do is tap the shutter button and you can take your photo. Now, with those quick settings, there's more advanced settings that you can configure with the Photos app here. And you can just swipe up on the screen to bring them up here. You'll see they appear at the bottom. The first one here is simple, it's your flash. So if you wanted to take a photo and you want your flash to be on, you would set it to on, tap, take your photo, and it'll use the flash. You can choose between auto and off as well. I traditionally just leave it to auto. The next option here is live photos, and this turns your photos into short videos. It captures about a second to a second and a half before and after you take your photo, creating a little moment. So to demonstrate this, I'm gonna leave it on live on and anytime you have any setting on you'll see it appears up top in yellow so now that we have live photo on i'm going to kind of move this duck around like this as i take my photo continue moving him and then if we tap on the preview if we tap on the screen and hold our finger like this as i take my photo a second before and after of audio and video was recorded. So you can kind of relive a little bit more of the moment that you were in and you can look back on them and see some extra video that goes with them. Just keep in mind that if you use this feature and you send your photos to people, anybody who has an iPhone will also be able to see the live photo in the exact same way. So if you're not happy with what you said, maybe 
you got to turn that off before you send the photo. So right now we'll just set it back to auto. The next option here is different types of customizations that you can have preset on your iPhone 15 Pro camera. Now this one is standard, that's what we're going to work with, but you can swipe over to rich contrast, vibrant, warm, cool, and you can change the tone down here if you want and even the warmth. So if you want to customize it, you can. But like I said, we're just going to set this to the standard and we'll just tap here to confirm it. The next option is the size of your photo. So we're shooting in a four by three dimension right here, but you can tap the square and you'll get a one by one. Great for Instagram or square photos. You also have the six by nine. So if you tap on that, it makes the screen much larger and you're shooting in six by nine format. For this video, we'll stick to the four by three. Next, we have an exposure option here as well. Now this exposure locks in. You don't have to lock the exposure on screen. This one, you just set it where you want it and it's gonna stay even when you're shooting without the focus lock. So I can still tap to focus and I'm not losing the exposure I had preset. So keep that in mind as well. If you need to adjust the exposure on a more permanent level than just swiping up and down on screen. Next, we have a timer. We all know what a timer is. Anytime you want to take a photo and have a timer to count down before it shoots that photo, you can then just tap right here. So we'll just do a three second test on this timer. And you can see up top, it's telling us that we have three seconds. We can just take our photo. You'll get a little countdown here and it'll take the photo for us. One thing that I notice a lot of people do is they forget to turn this feature off after. And then when you're about to take a photo, you end up having to wait for this countdown before it takes it. And you usually kind of miss your photo. So just turn it off when you're done with it. The next option here is simple filters. The iPhone has tons of filters in it, just like Instagram and other social media sites, but these are live filters. So you can actually see how they look before you take the photo. It's nice. I don't really use it, but it is there if you do need it. Now, lastly, at the bottom right, this flips your camera from the rear facing camera to the front. The front facing camera is nowhere near as good as the rear facing camera, but you can flip it and then you can see me right here. And you have all the same similar options there. You may have a few that don't show up, but for the most part, it's all the same and they work very similar. So that's the photo section in the iPhone 15 camera app. Let's pull down and now let's move over to portrait mode one of the most popular options within the camera app. And you can see right here, it's a little bit off. You've got three times zoom, two times zoom, and one time zoom right here. So I'm gonna set this to two times zoom. We're gonna get our subject in place here and you can see what immediately happened there. And that's what portrait mode is. It focuses in on the subject that you want and blurs out the background creating a really nice, almost professional looking shot. And all you have to do is test this out in the real world and you'll feel like you're an actual photographer. Now it's not foolproof. If the subjects are too close, you'll see that when you try to focus, it'll tell you to move further away up there. You also have some light options here with portrait mode. So this is the natural light. We have the second option here, which will turn it into a studio light. We have contour light, stage light, stage light mono, and high key mono. And the great thing is that when you take a photo with any one of these options, you can always change it in the photo editor after. For example, let's just focus on this. We take our photo with natural light. We tap on our preview. If we tap edit here, we can actually change the option we chose. So at the top, you can see this grayed out. If we tap on that, we can choose from all those different lighting effects. And now you can see them in action even better. But for this, let's just go back to the beginning. Additionally, you can turn portrait off completely just by tapping on that and you'll get yourself a standard photo at the same time. So I'll just cancel that out here and we'll discard our changes. Now, one thing to keep in mind with portrait mode, you saw when you take your photo, it takes a little bit longer. So you're going to need a steadier hand while it's spinning there. You don't want to move around too much or it'll ruin the photo. So from here, you can just tap this arrow or pull up on the screen. Again, you have your flash. This is f-stop. So this is actually controlling how much blur you're going to see in the background. So if we pull it all the way to the end there, we're pulling almost all the blur out. And if we take it this way, we really blur that background quite a bit, as you can see right there. It's totally up to you on how you want to use this. I traditionally don't touch it. I usually leave it where it is. It's pretty good. And again, 
all the same options, your size, your exposure, timer, and your filters. You can flip to the front facing camera if you like, but that's how you use portrait mode with the iPhone 15 camera and 15 Pro cameras. We'll pull down our settings and let's move over to some video. Now video is huge with the iPhone. You can shoot video in HD, which is 1080p at 30 frames per second. You can go up to 60 frames per second, and you can even shoot 4K video at 60 frames per second, or 24, or 30 frames per second. But when it comes to video, the process is very similar to photos. You have your record button down here, you can flip to the front camera, and you have your preview. All your zooms are available to you in the middle, just like they were in the photo section. And if you just pull up on screen, you have your additional options. For the most part, they're the same. You have your flash, but this case, it's going to be like a light. So the light is on. And if I turn it off, you'll see it turns off. Exposure is the same, and this is action mode. Now, if you turn this on, it helps the camera work in a way that's better for action. You can see that it automatically flipped to the 0.5 zoom camera. That's because it's going to try to adjust and crop things to eliminate some of that jitter or motion from whatever you're doing in that action shot. So this is like GoPro style. I've tested it. It's not the greatest, but it does a better job when it's on than when it's off. So if you are in a bumpy scenario or action mode or running or anything like that, it's a good feature to have on. So let's just quickly take a video here. So we've got our duck. I'm going to tap to take my video. You'll see it'll start recording up there. You can also tap here if you want to take a picture during your video and it'll save that to your photos as well. And as things are going on here, you can zoom in while it's recording. So that's something that's nice that's there as well. When you're done, you can tap stop. And when you preview a video, it'll play automatically. You can see the little slider is moving. You can pause it and it plays without audio. So you can turn the audio on, play it up here. If you want to take a picture during your, you can hear me talking, very similar options at the bottom. However, when you do go to edit video, it gives you options here that are very similar to photos, but you can actually trim the ends and the beginning of your video. But there's not too much to it when it comes to editing videos, especially with the Photos app, but it's there if you need it. So we'll move back to our video section here and let's just go back to our one-time zoom and we'll swipe over to the cinematic mode, which is very similar to portrait mode, but for videos. So now you can see we have sort of this blurred effect here on screen. So if we tap on a subject, it blurs out the background, just like portrait mode photos did. But this time you're taking a video and these are quite large, these videos. So use them at your own risk because it will fill up the memory and space on your phone pretty quick. Now this can create some really amazing shots as you can see on screen, giving you that blurred effect. Once again, you do have some options right here. So for this, you have your flash or your light. You have the f-stop here so you can control how much is going to blur the background when you are focused in on something. If you want it really blurry or if you don't want the blur at all, totally up to you. Set that. And then we have exposure once again. All the same options are pretty much there. Your zooms, your pinch to zoom. If you want to tap and lock your focus, this one will only lock focus, not exposure. You don't have exposure controls there. You have to control them here. But that's the cinematic video on the iPhone. Now, slow motion videos, these are great and they're a lot of fun, especially if you use them in the right scenario. Now, by default, it's set at the top here to HD at 240. You can tap on that right here and it'll switch it to 120. Now, 120 isn't going to be as slow as 240, so I tend to shoot most of my slow motion video in 240. And I'll give you a quick example here of what that's going to look like. I'm just going to throw these AirPods into the middle as I record. So. Tap to focus, make sure your zoom is where you want it, and we'll start our recording. We'll stop it, we'll tap the preview, and you can see it started, and it slows down that throw, just like that. Just replay it again here, so you can see, creates that slowed effect. And if you use this in settings like a sports game, or an action shot, or something like that, can create some really nice effects. And just look online. Some people have created professional videos using this slow motion feature on the iPhone. As for your options, we pull up, you have a light and you have exposure. You can flip to the front facing camera here. And as I mentioned, you can switch between 240 and 120. 
We'll move over one more, and this is time lapse. It's like the reverse of slow motion. It speeds up the video, as you can see on screen here. It's speeding up, let's say, three, four, five hours worth of video into just a few seconds or a few minutes. And it gives you a really nice effect. These are great. You've probably seen them in movies. And all you do to set this up here, you can tap to focus on what you want to focus on. You can use the exposure option right there. That's all you pretty much have in your zooms. So set it up, put it on a tripod or something, tap, and just let it go for as long as you want. It does need to have some time to gather. Otherwise, you're going to end up with just a 0.5 second video, for example. I did that one, and you can see right here how fast that was. So you do need to give it some time if you plan to use it. Moving back over to the other side here, we have Pano. And this is the panoramic photos. Very unique, very fun. I don't see a lot of people using them, but there's some really cool effects that you can create with it. And to give you an example here, this desk is a mess over here and over here, but you can only see what's here. With this effect, I can actually pull everything into the frame. So to do this, again, you have your zoom options. We're just gonna leave it at one time zoom. You have tap to focus and you can flip from side to side depending on which way you want to go. So let's focus in on our subject here. So let's focus in on that back duck. And what we're going to do is we're just going to take our phone and we're going to kind of just guide it across like this and gather everything in the photo. So we'll start here. We'll tap and we'll just work our way across. And you want to be as steady as you can. Now, I'm lucky I'm already on a table, but I'm not going to be as steady because I'm behind a camera at the same time. So anyway, so that's the photo. Again, keep in mind with what you can see here right now. And then when I show you the preview, look at all that you're able to see in the photo. You're picking up so much more than what this camera was picking up. This camera only can grab up to this duck. So we're getting pretty much this kind of look. And when you see the preview, you're now expanding it. To what you're seeing actually on video but that is the pano the panoramic photos with the iphone camera before we move on uh this is the stand i'm using every time i make these videos this is a very cheap like ten dollar stand it's made of metal it adjusts it moves i'll put the link to it in the description that way you guys can pick it up for yourself if you want it i've had it for like 10 years it's still going strong now let's take a look at the iphone camera settings for this we open our settings application you can then scroll down and you want to find the camera section almost to the bottom here you can tap on camera and this is where you can configure everything you need for your camera to work the way you want so for starters we have record video and by default when i open up my camera app it goes to 1080p at 30 frames per second. If you would like it to open in any other option, you can select it just like this. Now keep in mind, you have 4K at 60 all the way down to 720 at 30. 4K at 60 is gonna use the most space on your phone and you have examples of how much it's going to use. 720 will use the least. For me, I traditionally shoot at 1080p at 30 or at 60. Usually if I'm filming YouTube videos, I'll have it at 60 and I shoot at 30 just for fun. Scrolling down, we have show pal formats. This is a television video format. It probably doesn't apply to you. It's mainly for countries in Europe, Africa, Asia, and South America. If you're planning to use it that way, you can switch that on. You can enhance the stabilization, which is on by default. What it's gonna do is video and cinematic mode will stabilize videos by zooming in slightly. And if you don't like the fact that it zooms in a little bit to help you with the movement of your phone, you can turn that off, but I leave it on. It's never really been a big deal. The next one is an action mode setting. It's called action mode lower light. This mode will decrease the stabilization to optimize for less bright scenes. So if you need that, you can turn that on right here. HDR video, you can record up to 60 frames per second in a 10 bit high dynamic range, including Dolby Vision. It's on by default. I've never turned it off, but everybody is very high on this feature. So I leave it on. Auto FPS, auto 30 and auto 60 frames per second. It's gonna automatically reduce the frame rate to improve low light videos and optimize the file size. You can choose to have it auto 30 off or auto 30, 60. I just leave it at auto 30, 60. Locking the camera. This is an option here that you can turn on if you don't want the camera to automatically switch while it's recording. And you probably saw that happen through this video. You can turn this on. Additionally, you can lock the white balance. This is a good feature. 
Um, if you use your phone to film YouTube videos or TikToks or any kind of social media moving back over, the second option is to record in slow-mo settings. And by default, as I showed you earlier, it starts at 1080p at 240 frames per second, but you can just tap it in the actual camera app. But if you want it to start at 120, you can set that. And again, you have examples of how much space it's going to use on your phone for a one minute video. So keep that in mind and set it to what you like. Next is record cinematic. And here you can just change your cinematic settings, how they're gonna start. You can always change these in the camera app anyway, but if you want it to open up to one of those options, select the one you want. I leave it 1080p. And again, you can see how much space each one will take up. Next is formats. And the first option is the camera capture if you want it to be set to high efficiency or most compatible. Basically to reduce the file size, it uses the high efficiency mode, which is H-E-I-F, these formats down here. The most compatible will always use JPEG, but then you'll end up with larger file sizes. Also cinematic video, 4K videos using 60 frames and the slow motion at 240. Also HDR video require the high efficiency. So if you plan to use any of those features, it's best to just leave it on high efficiency. Otherwise they won't work. Photo mode here, 24 megapixels. So basically the main camera, the one time zoom camera is saved at 12 or 24 megapixels. But if you tap on this, you can actually have it to set all of them to 12 megapixel or have it at 24. But 12 will reduce your file size. Pro Raw and resolution control. Now, if you shoot Pro Raw, you already know what all this is. If you don't know what Pro Raw is, it's going to give you the maximum resolution up to 48 megapixels and it can be captured on the main camera at one times zoom. You can read the rest of this for that information, but when you turn it on, you can use the Pro Default, which is Pro Raw Max. But if you open that up, you can switch up some of these options. Again, you can do your research on this. I don't use Pro Raw. It's just not something I'm interested in. But if you are into photography and having the best photo, Pro Raw is the way to go. Pro Res, this is for video. So it's going to show the camera control for Pro Res when it's on. So if I tap on that, you'll see the Pro Res encoding HDR, SDR log read this again if you use this i don't really use pro res but i'll show you in the camera app if we go over to video we now have pro res hdr up there that we can tap on it and it's telling me the max time i have on this brand new iphone to shoot a pro res hdr video is 57 minutes so keep that in mind there are very large file sizes we'll go back to our settings i'm actually going to turn this off because i never use it and next we have preserve settings this is good because when you open the camera app on your phone, it traditionally will open up to the last thing you had open. If you close the app completely like this, it always opens up to photos. If you tend to shoot videos often or you use certain features often, you can have it set to the last mode it opened on. So for example, you want to set it to the last camera mode, creative controls, depth control, macro control, all of these things you can configure. So for example, let's say for me, I want it to always be on video when I open this up. You saw earlier when I close the app, it opens back up to photos. So now that I have it on video, I'm gonna go back to my settings. I want it to save my last camera mode. So I'm gonna go up, open my photo app, it's on video, I'm gonna close it. Now it should always open to what I had on last in my camera option. So if I just go and open up my camera, there you go, it opens to video. And it'll do the exact same thing for all of these options. So set them up the way you want them. Macro control, I'll explain macro a little bit later in this video, but it's a great feature there as well. Record stereo sound, I leave that on. I don't know who really records without stereo these days. Use volume up for burst. Again, I'll talk about that in some of the tips section. Scanning QR codes, I just popped one on screen there. You can use your camera to scan those QR codes and then it'll take you to that website. Show detected text. Now this is a cool feature. I'll talk about it in the tip section as well, but it's going to allow you to copy text from anywhere that you are and turn it into text that you can copy, paste, write with, etc. But I'll show you that a little bit later. Next is grid. I like to use the grid. So once it's on and you open your camera app, you'll see we have these lines. This is something to do with the rule of thirds. Every year I forget what it's for. I get confused. Uh, not sure, but I'm not a professional photographer. I just know how this camera works. The next one is level. You can turn that on. And the level is great, actually. I, I found it to be very useful. So 
when you're taking your photos and videos, you can see that level. When I was off, you can see the level kind of crosses off. So this will ensure that you can get a video or photo that's perfectly straight like that. So I'm actually going to turn that on and leave it on. This next one, again, mirror front facing camera. This I'll talk about in the tips as well. This is something that I get asked all the time. I actually have a completely dedicated video to that. And then view outside the frame. This view outside the frame has thrown me off for years, but uh, let me just show you what it does. So this is what we have here. Um, I'm not sure how it activates, but it looks like when you zoom into a certain point, you can see what's outside of your frame. See how it kind of shows me what's outside the frame here. I thought in the past you were able to take a photo, then you could edit later and grab what was outside the frame if you wanted it, but that's not the case. This is just showing you what's outside the frame above and below. So that way you can, I guess, center or position your photo and video the way you want. So you can have that on or off. I just leave it as is. The photographic styles, we went over this earlier in the video. These are those options that you can choose from the standard, the high contrast in the photo section. You can have it set to this so that way when you open up the camera app, it'll automatically set your camera to use these rather than having to set it in the app. I'm just going to keep it on standard. I don't really use that that much. And then we have main camera. If we tap on that, you can see we have 28 millimeter, we have 35 millimeter, and you can tap the one time zoom button to toggle between 24 millimeter and additional lenses. And this is something I'm going to talk about again in the tips section of the video. If we scroll down a little bit here, we have portraits in photo mode. So this is a new feature. You probably saw it while I was filming this video. In the camera section if i tap on this guy right here you can see that f-stop appears right there and if i turn it on for example let's two times zoom if i turn it off you'll see that the background unblurs if i tap to focus on him and then turn it on the background blurs and i can actually pull up here and you'll see we get that setting right there too so it's almost like having portrait mode but right from the photos app to me i don't get this does it sometimes automatically where it'll turn itself on and it usually is when it's uh facing a person or a cat or a dog i think that's how it's set so you'll notice this will turn on by itself in the photo section so if this is something you don't like and you want to be in full control when portraits turn on Turn this setting off. Prioritize faster shooting. It's going to intelligently adapt image quality when rapidly pressing the shutter. Your choice there. Lens correction. This is going to correct the lens distortion on the front and ultra wide cameras. Again, your decision and macro controls. Macro controls. I'm going to get into this in the tip section, but macro is basically a super close up photo. So if you want to be able to control that, make sure that's still on. So those are the settings for the iPhone 15 and iPhone 15 Pro Max camera. So now let's get into some iPhone 15 Pro camera tips. For this, we're going to open our camera app. And the first one here is in your photo section. So as I mentioned earlier, that setting which allowed you to switch between different lenses. So your one time zoom lens actually has a 28 millimeter. If you tap it again, 35 millimeter and even a 24 millimeter. So you can tap between those right there. And like I showed you in settings, you can configure which one will be the initial one that is on. Another tip is using night mode with your camera. So I'm going to turn off the lights here. Night mode will turn itself on when it detects not enough light in the photo. So if we pull up, you'll see we have this little moon and you can see five seconds is up there. If we tap on that moon, we're going to be able to pull to the left and turn night mode off or even pull to the right and give us a max of eight seconds. When you do that, look at how long it takes for the photo to be taken. You need to have a very steady hand when you do this at the same time, but it's going to look a lot better than if you took the photo with the standard. So this is night mode right here. That's how it looks. Hold as much light as it could. So you can use that whenever you're in low light situations. Just look for it here or up there. The next tip is to flip that front facing camera. So let's go back into our settings app here. And the one we're going to look at is the mirror front camera. So if we go back into the camera app and we turn the front facing camera on, you'll see I'll have my hand kind of like pointing this way. I'll take my photo. When I tap on the preview, you can see my hand is facing the other way, right? It flips it. So if you don't want it to flip, what you would do is you would, you would turn on the front camera feature, come back to your camera app, flip to the front. And this time when we take our photo, I'm pointing that way. And when we look at the photo, 
I'm still pointing that way. So if you're someone who wants the camera not to flip, you're going to mirror that front facing camera. For me, I just traditionally leave it off. The next tip is using volume up for burst. And if you like to take burst photos, this is a good option as well. And I'll show you how burst photos work. So we'll open our camera app again. And to take a burst photo, all you're going to do is press on the volume button like so. And you can see it took like 20 pictures in a second and you can open up your preview to see 18 photos in the burst. So this is great for action moments. If you want to capture all different actions quick, you can't beat that burst mode. You can also use the shutter right here and just pull to the left. Same thing. Additionally, with the shutter button, you can actually take videos while you're in the photo mode. So for example, something's going on, you want to change the video quick, you can just hold your finger over that shutter button and you can take a video. As soon as you let go, the video will stop and it'll save it to the preview there. However, if you want the video to stay on without having to hold it, just swipe it over here to that little lock. The video will stay locked. It'll just be like you're in the video section and you can stop it manually right there. And those are actually called quick take videos. Now let's talk about this macro lens and what it is, how it works. So by default with the iPhone, like I said, it switches between camera lenses automatically the way I have it set up. But you see, I got really close to something here and you can get super close. You can see how close you can get to this duck. I'm like almost touching the camera here and it's allowing me to get that close. That's macro. It's like super zoomed in. So when you have the macro lens on, you're going to see this little flower appear at the bottom left there of the screen. So we can tap to turn it off and it'll flip to the other camera lens that doesn't perform macros. But if you do tap again, you can always tap that flower to flip back to that camera. And that's why there are those settings here that allow you to control the macro mode as well as the lenses while you're filming. Now let's test out this view detected text. And I only have a couple of things here. So I'm going to show you on a small scale, but you'll get the idea here. So I have that show detected text feature on. So whenever it detects text on the iPhone, you're going to see it kind of gathers it in a little border. There's a border around that iPhone right there. And you'll see this little icon appear here. If we tap on that, it's going to pull that text instantly from whatever you show. And you can then select all the text. You can copy it. You can open up a note or a message. Let's just go into messages. We'll create a new one here and we can just paste that right into our messages just like that. So if you're on the road and you're trying to capture a phone number, even if you've taken the photo, for example, you can still pull that word right from it. And that's the live text feature. And I'll show you again here. I actually got a power bank that has more text on it. So I'll show you how it works if we take the photo. So there it is. It's gathering right around. We can take the photo. We can tap that option over there like I just showed you. But if you don't and you just have this photo and later on you're like, great, I need that number. You can tap on the photo itself here. And you can just select the text just like that. You can see I'm just selecting it as if it was something I typed. Copy it. Let's go back to our message here. And paste it in there. And all that information that I got from that power bank, I was easily able to copy and paste right into a text. So I really like that feature. I leave it on. It's not very intrusive at all. But you decide if you want the show detect text feature to be on or off for yourself. But that's how it works. Now another quick tip is to actually use the buttons, the volume rockers, on the top to take your photo. So anytime you want to take your photo, just press on the volume up rocker. It'll take your photo. If you press on the volume down rocker, it'll take your photo as well. If you press and hold on that volume rocker, the down volume rocker, it'll start taking a video. When you release your finger, the video will stop and it'll save to your photos. Additionally, for iPhone 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max users, you have an action button here. So if you want, you can open your settings, go to the action button controls here, and just swipe over to the camera. Set your action button to work with the camera, and anytime you press and hold on that action button, it'll automatically open the camera. Additionally, when the camera is open, you can press on that action button to take photos, and if you press and hold, it'll take a video. So pretty interesting stuff there with the camera app and the action button. Now, when it comes to taking better photos, you can't beat natural light. You can't beat lighting that is in front of the subject. You don't want light pointing at your camera. 
I get this question a lot, and usually the issue is low light situations. Even though this has a night mode on, you always want to try to have the most light possible that you can when you're taking your photos. Something to note with the camera app, you'll notice this green icon here. Even when I close this, you'll see it's still up there. It goes away pretty quick with the camera app, but if you ever see that little green icon open or on on your phone, that means your camera's on. It could mean that an application has glitched and it's stuck on. It could mean someone's watching you through your camera. I don't know, but that's just to warn you that the camera is on. Like I said, when you close the app, it takes a second, it disappears, and that means the camera's off. So keep that in mind for your own safety and just so you know what's going on. But that is it. That's how you use the iPhone 15 cameras, the Pros, the Max, and the Plus. If you have any questions or ran into any trouble, let me know in the comments. I try to respond to every comment that comes my way. And as always, there's a full playlist of the iPhone 15 tutorial series with tips, tricks, and tutorial videos to help you get the most out of your iPhone. So definitely check that out if you're looking to learn more. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and subscribe for more videos like this. And click the bell notification box if you want to be notified as soon as I post a video. First comment always wins so get to it thanks for watching i'll see you in the next one